Welcome back to CTV News Channel. I'm Todd Vander Hayden. Culture shock time now. Top stories that are trending, getting buzz. And we're going to start with a story that's been dominating headlines all week. The racist tweet by actress Roseanne Barr and the cancellation of her hit new show. Roseanne on Twitter compared a former top advisor of President Barack Obama to an ape from Planet of the Apes. It prompted fury on social media. There was some sympathy, though, uh, for those who were stuck working with Roseanne Barr. Uh, there are, of course, questions about what this is going to mean for her and her character, uh, whether she can ever come back from this. She talked about it being partially to blame on taking a sleeping pill. We're going to bring in our culture shockers now and get their take on this story. Rebecca Zayman is standing by in Toronto. We've got Kenny Bodanis in Montreal. Jason Rockman also in Montreal. Uh, Rebecca, let me start with you. What do you think about this story? Is there any way that Roseanne Barr can or should be able to come back from this? Huh. Well, I don't know about the should, but I'm going to guess she will. Um, because as we've seen with, for example, the Me Too movement, um, already there are people who were sort of lambasted by it not even six months ago who are already making strides towards getting cast and things again. And uh, I think for Roseanne, this is just the start. I mean, there's already people making offers to her, people on the right-wing side of the conservative parties the, over in the U.S., but uh, definitely people who have interest in what she has to say. And I think that... Uh, while it might not necessarily be for the best reasons, she will, in fact, probably make a comeback once again. Kenny, there are all sorts of toxic uh, Twitter messages on Roseanne Barr's account about conspiracy theories and all sorts of different things, but this really went beyond the pale. And even those on the Republican side of things, even some supporters of President Trump, who Roseanne Barr is a big supporter of, we know that, have said this went too far. And yet, there are some who may start to say, oh, she's being unfairly targeted. She made a mistake. She's apologized. Let's move on. What's your read? Well, she works for a private company, and that company has policies that they stuck to firmly, and it's up to that company to decide how they deal with an employee who sends a racist tweet. And she's learned a very hard lesson, unfortunately, on the back of others. I'm curious to know what people who have her similar mindset will take away from this. Are they going to go, OK, I'm still a racist, but now I'm going to learn to keep my mouth shut? Or are they going to be a little introversion and reflection and say, OK, maybe what I'm doing isn't right. Maybe I should look into a different way of thinking. Uh, but I think she suffered the consequences that her network wanted her to suffer. And as unfortunate it is for everybody around her, hopefully there's some takeaway and hopefully not just her, but other people learn a lesson from it as well. You wonder whether she will become a champion for those on the fringe, Jason, as well. Uh, uh, where does she go from here, do you think? Well, unfortunately, with Roseanne Barr, um, if you do a little bit of digging, you don't have to dig too deep. She has a long history of opening her mouth about a lot of subjects that she's been embellishing on over the last uh, little while on Twitter. She's definitely uh, a right winger. Uh, I think she will definitely find love on the right wing side. And it's unfortunate, but I applaud ABC for doing what they did. I think they did the absolute right move. No Zero tolerance for this kind of stuff. Will she come out on top for this? Well, I think she might become a champion for that fringe movement, but I don't think she's going to ever be seen in mainstream again. All right, let's go from one controversial celebrity to another because Kim Kardashian paid a visit to the White House, yes, to make a star-powered case directly to President Donald Trump and his staff on behalf of a woman who is serving a life sentence for drug offenses. The reality star had been reportedly in touch with Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, over the case, and Kushner is taking a look at an overhaul of the prison system in the United States, among other duties. Uh, let me start with you on this. Kenny, your take on Kim Kardashian and Donald Trump at the White House. My first reaction was, oi, can I give somebody else my time? But then I thought about it, and wouldn't it be ironic if the woman who was criticized for being famous for being nothing is the one person who, alongside Donald, Donald Trump, brings some sort of positive and much-needed prison reform to the United States? Uh, what has the world been coming to? But I think if she can move the needle at all, all, and she can make a difference for people who are incarcerated and spending their lives in prison, like Alice Marie Johnson, I think, why not? At least it's finally doing something that people can coalesce and get behind. And if she can use her celebrity for this kind of good, I say go for it.
Rebecca? <laughs> well, I think calling Kim Kardashian famous for doing nothing is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the woman has done quite a bit, and she's done it really well. Uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote an article called Eight Things, Eight Positive Things Kardashians Are Doing for the World. Yes, really. And let me tell you, the Kardashians have been doing a lot of really good, politically aware things for the world for the past several years while they've been in the spotlight. Sure, they're reality stars, but they've been using that reality stardom to show people how to do business, show people how to be sisters, show people how to be politically active. For example, when it comes to the Armenian genocide, raising awareness on that. This is fantastic. Mm. This is an opportunity that Donald Trump has not had to have an A-list celebrity that people actually care about in the White House, talking about something that matters. And she's using it to her full advantage. He's using it to his. I say all the power to her. Strong defense of Kim Kardashian That's from right. Rebecca Zayman. Okay, uh, Jason. That's okay Rockman. if I learn one thing every day. I'm fine. <laughs> there we go, Jason. Uh, well, I saw that picture. Um, oh, let, okay, let's be. Let's let's address the elephant in the room. I mean, the photograph when you when that comes up on your on your news feed, you're like, is this the apocalypse? I mean, what's <laughs> going on? But um, I, I have to agree. If you can put a p positive spin on it, and if something positive can happen, you never know who the person is that's going to make that difference. And if it's Kim Kardashian that can get some reform on some of these policies, all the more power to her. I'll applaud her for that. But man, does it make a really weird photo op. And, and that Cheshire <laughs> grin on Trump's face says it all. Oh. <laughs> okay, one last one here. And this has to do with jewelry and mental health. And bear with me for a second. But there is a lifestyle brand based in Los Angeles that created a mental illness jewelry line. It features necklaces that have scripted words like anxiety, bipolar, and depression. We're going to show some of them here. As some people feel this romanticizes mental illness. Rebecca, what do you think? I think that there's a lot of good intentions here, but I don't know that it necessarily comes across. I mean, one of the reasons that the jewelry line exists is to break down the stigma of just talking about mental health issues and talking about these things that people are facing. Um, but as one of the comments in uh, the story that we have on the site says, you wouldn't wear a necklace that says cancer, you know, you wouldn't wear a necklace that says HIV. And so, it's about breaking down stigmas, but maybe there's a better way to do it than just exactly naming the illness and sort of putting yourself in the path of people who might not fully understand it. Jason? You know, um, I, I, I don't really know what to think of this. At first, I was I, I was kind of confused by it, but then when I dug a little deeper and I saw that the, the founder of the jewelry brand was someone that suffered from uh, bipolar disorder and from depression and from anxiety, I kind of got what she was doing. Obviously, it becomes a fashion item, and there's going to be parodies that are going to happen. So will the actual thing that they're trying to do be, get accomplished? I don't know. It's a tough call. But I'm, I'm not someone who suffers from anxiety, so I, I don't really want to say anything on it. If you suffer from anxiety and that's something that you want to wear and it makes you feel better and makes you feel like your voice is being heard, all the more power to you. Last word goes to you, Kenny. What do you think? I think at the very least it uh, needs to be given a chance. There are no, uh, there's no jewelry that says cancer, but there are ribbons for everything nowadays except for what? Reed. Mental illness. You know, I went to play basketball with my daughter the other day. I twisted my ankle and put ice on it. I cared for it right away. You know how long it took me to go talk to somebody because I wasn't feeling quite right? 10 years. Why? Stigma. I think if somebody's wearing a necklace that says depression on it, I would be likely to say, hey, do you mind if I ask you about your necklace? And already that's way better than spending a day a year tweeting for a nickel and hoping that that's going to change something. Kenny Bodanis, Rebecca Zayman, and Jason Rockman joining us today. Great to have the three of you with us. As always, thanks for coming on CTV. Thanks for having Thanks. me. Thank you.